Hi everybody, a really crucial video this, how to write a judgement. In economics papers, lots of these long answer questions, discuss, evaluate, examine, assess, normally these are the key words in the question. There are quite two-sided debate, but then a judgement at the end. And this judgement separates the good from the best economists. And it's a difference between getting an OK mark and the best, the highest marks. So important to get these right, therefore. So what is a judgment? Well, the mark scheme will say that a good judgment is balanced, well-reasoned, and effective. These are just words. But more importantly, a judgment is an answer to the question. It's not a summary. It's not a conclusion. And boy, oh God, it's just driving me crazy now thinking about it. All these students that start their judgment or their final paragraph with in conclusion or in summary, oh my God, it drives me nuts. You know, at that stage, I just want to stop, want to tear it to shreds, want to tear my hair out. It just gets me so annoyed. Oh, it's not that. <laughs> it's an answer to the question. That you can take away. We'll focus on what these three things mean uh, later. The best judgments, though, will have these key features. Every time I read amazing judgments, it's always these key things that constitute the amazingness of that judgment. Start by answering the question explicitly. Lots of students are scared to do this. Why? Because they think after a year or two, they don't have the, the economic know-how to explicitly get off the fence. Don't worry about it. Answer the question explicitly. As long as you do number two and you justify why, the examiner will love you and score you top, top marks. So answering the question explicitly. So like restating the question and answering it is often a very good way to go. So the question is, discuss whether indirect taxation is the most effective way in solving the overconsumption of cigarettes. You would say, Indirect taxation is not the most effective way, or is the most effective way, or is not on its own the most effective way in solving the overconsumption of cigarettes. Okay, so you'd explicitly answer the question. Don't be afraid, big marks for that, as long as you do number two and you justify why you said that. How do you do that? You weigh up your points, you prioritize the arguments at the heart of the debate. So whether you've mentioned that already in your essay and now you're just really weighing it up and saying how important it is, that's good, that's different, that will score, that's not a summary. Maybe it's you leaving something so important for this judgment, maybe that's how you want to do it. That's fine as well, doesn't matter. Whatever option you pick in justifying why, it's fine. Even if you said it already, weighing it up and talking about it differently will score you maximum marks. So don't ever think you're repeating yourself, you're not, if you're weighing it up and saying how important it is in coming to your final answer to the question. So these two things very much go hand in hand. As long as you justify why you said yes or no to the answer to the question, the examiners will score you big, big marks. So important to do one and two. And not to be afraid. Get off the fence. Be explicit. But always remember, nothing in economics is ever certain, is ever guaranteed to take place as you think. So even if your answer is yes or no, it should never be full stop with justification. You've got to show balance. You've got to show that you're a thinking, critical economist. That's what balance is all about. So let me give you some examples. If your answer to the question is yes, it shouldn't just be yes, this is why, full stop. It should be yes, this is why, but look, I'm a thinking economist. My answer is yes, as long as the government takes care of this issue in the economy. As long as businesses react in this way. As long as certain things change. As long as this risk is considered and this risk is... Uh, taking a key consideration of in the long term or something. You are showing that you're aware that things may change in the future, that certain things need to take place alongside your yes, that maybe another policy is needed alongside the one that you said yes to in terms of it being effective. So that's balance. If your answer is no, it's well, okay, you said why it's no, but then it's, well, what needs to change to then maybe make your judgment yes? Is it an alternative policy used in set instead, that's balance. Is it use the policy but alongside other policies, so no on its own, other policies alongside it is better. Well that's balance, all those things are balance, right? So that's what you're looking to do, show balance, remembering that nothing is ever guaranteed, that's so important, nothing is ever certain. So just showing a bit of humility here basically is going to score lots of marks, that's going to be the balance part of the judgement. Always look to consider short run and long run effects. This argument always applies in economics, and that running through your judgment is going to look good. So in the short run, um, even though I said yes, in the short run this is going to happen actually, we're going to see the benefits mainly in the long run. So think indirect tax, 
In the short run, look, this policy might not be very effective. Very, very inelastic demand is the reason why. But in the long term, that's when you see huge benefits. The revenue be it generates for the government and how it can be used to make elasticity more elastic over time. How it can be used to fund other key policies to be used alongside the tax. It means that the merits of the tax occur in the long run. So even though in the short run there aren't significant benefits, it's still worth doing. Short run, long run. Protectionism. Your answer might be no, protectionism is a bad thing. In the short run, it might have some benefits. It might protect uh, local industries, protect employment, absolutely. But in the long run, massive problems. It promotes inefficiency. It promotes uh, retaliation from other countries. Therefore, this should only be a short-term policy and should be taken away when its effects have taken place. Nice argument. A subsidy. Short run, long run. In the short run, subsidy can be very helpful in encouraging production, in bringing down costs, but in the long run, this policy is too costly given the state of government finances in the developed world. A lot of governments can't afford it for a long period of time. So short run, long run, always available. Where you choose to do that, it's up to you. Wherever it's, uh, it's going to have the biggest impact in your judgment, but always look for short run and long run impacts. And this, number five, this you must do throughout your judgment. Good judgments will not just be from the head of the student. They'll be from the head of the student, but backed up with real world examples and evidence. Then, the examiner's thinking, whoa, this is a seriously good judgment. Can't criticize it, can't kind of go against it. They've justified it with theory, of course, they've justified it with their own ideas, absolutely, but they've also got examples and evidence to really give it massive weight. So you're looking to do that throughout your judgment for it to get the maximum marks. This, doing a really good judgment, guys, is not easy. For all the variety of questions that come up, judgments are gonna be different, you're gonna to have to think of things in a different way. But the best economists will be able to bring everything together, tie everything together into an amazing answer to the question in this judgment. It requires practice for a variety of different questions. Always give good weight to writing a good judgment. In your plan, don't just say, oh, judgment. Actually write down, what are you going to include? These key bits, how am I going to write about them? Only then you know you can do it in exam conditions. Make sure, again, you leave enough time to do a judgment too, at least five minutes to do a good judgment which should normally be between half a page, three quarters of a page. Normally to do all of this, you're looking at that kind of length. Hopefully now you can smash your judgment. This hopefully is the light bulb moment for you to get those high, high marks. Thanks so much for watching, guys. All the best with these essays. I'll see you in the next video.